Start now. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا سبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا صدق الله العلي العظيم الحبيب خدا ختم الانبياد آواز بلند تر سلام اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد وعجيل فاجم Many thanks brother Mustahsin for your beautiful uh, recitation uh, Thank you everyone for joining uh, to the uh, online seminar regarding uh, uh, the Muharram programs during COVID-19 um, arranged by Madisullah uh, Mashiach uh, as a communication uh, to all of the um, center management and representatives. Uh, obviously, it's um, a major time of the year for us all, uh, and we have certain ways and traditions which we would like to keep up. Um, but within these extraordinary uh, circumstances, um, there will uh, bound to be some, some difficulties in uh, attaining that. So we will try and go through this uh, with you. It will be interactive, inshallah. Hopefully you can all see the screen. Um, some people have asked whether this will be recorded. Uh, yes, it will be. Um, right. So this is the agenda. We've had the recitation of the Quran. 
Um, we will we'll be quickly looking at this agenda and uh, meeting etiquettes. Um, and uh, uh, we will have a quick look um, at the uh, impact in terms of uh, deaths, uh, you know, unfortunate deaths within the Shia community as a result of COVID-19. Um, then we will have uh, 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 advice given by Milan Ali Raza Rizwi, uh, specifically around Muharram and you know, what, what are the precautions and recommendations from, from Manjit Shia. Um, we will do a recap uh, on the uh, reopening guidance. Um, if you, uh, some of you would have attended or most of you would have attended the, the um, conference we done on the 14th of July. Uh, where we had given some um, some of those guidances there, um, and since then, obviously, the government has have uh, released um, further updates, and there's been further communications from Mansur Lamar, from MCB, M, uh, from Minab, and many of the other organisations. So we'll just do a recap on that and look at what we recently sent out to you. Uh, there's going to be um, a a short uh, uh, section uh, where uh, we have uh, requested the brother uh, Sayyid Naki from Rahman Law Firm to uh, give us an update regarding the insurance and liability aspect. Um, we will then delve into risk assessments, um, which is key. Uh, we're going to have a look um, at, uh, which is going to be quite interesting, um, a video uh, which uh, demonstrates how the the uh, transmission of a cough, um, you know, stays within the the uh, room um, uh, with uh, some quite good technology. I think it's very important just to see that as as part of this. Uh, we will then give you um, a, a tip and a tool on how you can start calculating your capacity, uh, your new COVID capacity. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll briefly talk around communication plan and the importance of that. Um, we will do a full piece on uh, the um, uh, online recommendations on, on how you can best utilize the, the, the online platforms. Uh, there will be a, a, a closing uh, speech uh, potentially, um, inshallah. Um, although, as, as, the, as the, the advice has already been given by Mulana Ali Raza, as we early on, uh, that might not happen at that point, but if, if he's with us, inshallah, we can, we can have that covered. And at the end, there'll be a dua. Right, uh, let me just see, there's a message. Uh, yeah, so messages will be um, uh, open. You can, you can put in your comments um, or questions and we will uh, attempt to respond to them during this session. If not, if you're unable to get back to anybody, we will um, get back to you after the session. A uh, quick look at the um, rules. Uh, so uh, with meetings of this size, it's, uh, it becomes quite impossible if we are not uh, using strict controls. So we put in audio controls where you're unable to unmute yourself. If you, uh, if, if, if you are going uh, to have a slot um, and you're on the agenda, then I will look for you in the participant list and uh, 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 unmute you. Um, and if you have any specific questions when we're having interactive sessions, uh, then uh, I will unmute you then at that point as well. There will be polls as well uh, throughout, uh, just to get some of your views on, on some uh, of the important questions. Um, and yeah, as I said at the beginning, uh, if possible, if you could keep your videos on, um, uh, and uh, from an identity perspective, if you could put the city or the center that you're representing in the rename, uh, that'd be great. Moving on. So COVID-19 impact on the Shia community. So this is a slide, uh, if you were on the previous um, call, uh, approximately a month ago now, uh, you would have probably remember this slide. Uh, it's, it's been updated. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we, we hit globally a, a massive milestone of more than half a million COVID deaths. Uh, in the UK, we're approximately around 46,000 deaths uh, uh, at the moment, um, which has actually increased the percentage overall. Uh, last time we reported 0.06%, but that's now 0.07%. Um, uh, that the third point has not been updated, um, but that's obviously increasing at the same rate as well. 
the last point there regarding uh, COVID deaths, uh, 85 COVID deaths uh, within the Shia community. The last time we spoke, um, uh, yeah, the last time we spoke, uh, it was at 82. Since then, uh, within this one month, one month period, we've uh, been reported or we've been notified of uh, three other um, Shias who have uh, unfortunately lost their life uh, due to this. Um, so that's the outlook. As you can see, overall, there is what they're calling, you know, the baselining or the flattening of the curve. And there's many other stats which you're probably seeing on a daily basis um, showing that um, deaths overall are going down, um, which is which is good news, although there is there is talk of a real case of having a second wave. So we need to keep that in mind. OK, I'll move on. Um, and if you give me a minute, I need to identify where Malana Ali Rizvi is. Uh, okay, there's a message. Um, okay, so there is a bit of a delay on this. Um, just give me one minute. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to mute, uh, unmute uh, Dr. Abbas Nakwi, Milana, Dr. Abbas Nakwi. Um, can you hear us? Uh, yes, salam alaikum. Walaikum as salam. Uh, yes, Milana Saab, uh, uh, as for the message, uh, should we move this segment? Lower down. Uh, Are you ready now? Ah. Uh, well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I would like to welcome all of participants, our sisters and brothers from different centers and organizations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you tawfiq and protect from all calamities, especially the COVID-19. Uh, right now we are driving, so inshallah after a few minutes, uh, Maulana Ali Raza Rizvi will address you. Uh, but as you know, uh, today's meeting, we will mainly focus uh, on the advice of government and the Muharram is coming soon. Uh, what should be our next planning to open our centers, our Muharram programs? So all of us and our people, our community and their lives are important for us. Uh, at the same time, our centers, religious activities, educational activities, and Muharram commemoration that is also important. So this meeting, we call all of you with collective wisdom, inshallah. Uh, we will try to have uh, collective decisions uh, what to do and how to do. So, the rest is on the agenda for the Ahmed Saklan, so inshallah, uh, he will follow the agenda, he will carry on the program, and we are with you and listening and watching to you. Uh, thank you very much once again, and uh, uh, inshallah, by the end of the meeting, we will have the best of the conclusion for each other. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as you heard uh, from Dr. Basnakwi, uh, that we will uh, revisit this, this agenda item uh, shortly um, and uh, take the advice from Alana Ali Raza Rizvi. I'll move on.
Sorry, I had muted myself. Uh, the, the next agenda item uh, is that we're basically going to look at the slide that we had presented on the 14th of June. Um, and uh, then, then we'll uh, move away from the slide and look at the, the, the latest document that MUS had shared out for your, uh, uh, for your benefit, um, inshallah. So I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so what we try to do is we split down the the uh, uh, steps uh, and we put them into three three buckets. Um, and this is regarding you know if and when you know when when we decide to reopen or when we you know locally uh, at everyone's own own centres when that centre decides to open what kind of you know. Uh, in a high level uh, plan of decision making uh, is required and we split that down into three. One is assessing, second deciding, uh, and three uh, actually implementing. Uh, so I'm not going to go over this in, in great detail, but one of the key requests that we uh, had put forward, and this was not purely a MUS uh, recommendation, this was on the back of recommendations that we saw from uh, MCB, from Minab, um, and, and from the industry and, and from other industries, not just places of worship. So to have uh, effectively some point of contact within your center, within your community, who, who owns the, the uh, uh, you know, progression of uh, assessing and uh, uh, implementing uh, the measures. Um, uh, I will uh, open a poll uh, shortly. Uh, just to see where we've got with that in terms of percentage of, uh, of, of centres that have done that. Um, and uh, I'm moving uh, swiftly on. In the decide side, uh, you need a clear position, basically. So once you've got, you know, once you've got that team ready, you've studied the guidance and you've, you've, you've commenced your risk assessment, you've completed your risk assessment, you now need to have a clear plan of what you're actually going to do and start communicating that. Uh, and like I said, there is a segment later on where we'll go into, uh, into more detail. And the last, but definitely not the least, um, probably the most important, is that you implement what you have assessed. Um, and there's clear guidance on the health and safety uh, executive um, uh, web pages, which, which uh, uh, essentially say that uh, you know, having a risk assessment is not enough and you essentially you'll be liable if you have not implemented those reasonable measures uh, so without a doubt uh, that that would be required uh, I'm just going to open a poll hopefully it's going to work sometimes it doesn't um, let's see here we go hopefully it should be coming on your screen if I can give you uh, 30 seconds to respond to that there's a timer up there. So the question is, uh, for those on the phone, have you appointed a dedicated COVID-19 safety officer? Options are yes, not yet, um, or we are managing within the existing roles, um, which is obviously also an option. Um, people, are, people are responding very quickly, so we can give them time. Half the people have responded. And I'll give another 10 seconds. Okay, we'll end it there. Thank you. So we had half of the people respond. Um, so I'm going to share the results as well. Um, don't worry, these are all anonymous, so nobody's going to see names. Um, you can see on the screen, hopefully, uh, that uh, 11 uh, of the 30-year-old 30, 30 people who responded, so 35% said yes, they have appointed uh, a dedicated uh, safety officer um, and uh, half of them have said not yet which is understandable as well um, and 16% uh, are managing that function within the existing roles. Um, we are going to uh, just, just for your reference what we do is we take the poll responses and we, we build a report uh, at the end of it uh, which is usually shared as one of the outputs of the conference. Thank you for taking part.
And looking at the time, uh, I need to see if we have Brother Naki online. He's don't think he's online yet, so I'll continue with with this agenda item. Okay, moving on. So uh, again, related to the safety officer, I'm not going to go through this all over again as we did previously. Uh, you just need to have someone, and needs to be very clear amongst all of your your committee, your executive committee, your management committee, your community. They they should all know who to go to, who is actually taking the time out, reading the guidance, either directly from the government websites or from MUS, from MCB, or whatever other good trustworthy source they have, um, and the person who will actually be looking at implementing that. You know, it's, it's, it's a very logical thing to have. We have safeguarding offices for other areas of safeguarding, like, like child uh, safety, um, and you know, this is obviously a life-threatening situation, so to assign somebody would be uh, highly recommended. Uh, there is actually uh, some training which has been on offer. It's probably a bit too late to uh, inform you at this point, but there'll probably be follow-up sessions. We will add that in the out output of the meeting. Um, uh, I believe there may already be some recorded sessions from, from MCB which we can also forward on to you. Um, moving on. Um, if you can remember again from the from the June, uh, we had from, from the June conference, we had called out uh, uh, eight of the key measures that you would need if you were going to reopen. Um, uh, social distancing, obviously huge. That is the main uh, principle. Uh, one of the ideas was to have pre-registration, uh, uh, um, deep cleaning, hand sanitizers, all very common. I'm sure everyone is aware of this. Face covering, we know the UK government is now slowly opening up to, to mandating face covering at different places. So we had the announcement around mandating in public transport. Um, we've, we've heard recently that they'll be mandating it in shops as well at some point. I can't remember the date from the top of my head. Um, and it's, it's down as a should, one of the shoulds. Uh, or recommendations, uh, you know, uh, regardless of which setting you're in, because uh, quite clearly, if you're wearing if you're wearing a mask, quite clearly that will help uh, from you to spread it to somebody else. And if if both people are doing that, then you know you've got a good result there. Um, one way system, as you've seen in shops, there is that's a highly recommended thing. Uh, splitting the event into smaller gatherings based on your new capacity. We have got a segment on capacity further down, so we'll go into detail there. Um, and uh, outside of your actual building, your actual center or mosque, you know, uh, there should be a, a desk or a place where people have to go through where you do your, your checks, your, your due diligence, ask the questions. Some people have even got temperature checkers uh, at that point. Uh, there's there's many options that you can implement, and we have shared uh, the uh, recommendations from other organisations, uh, you know, to you, um, and also we've uh, you know, given you an updated brief, which I'll go on to now. Uh, I need to step away from this presentation, and I think. Just need to stop sharing for one minute. Okay, just coming back on. And I've seen some questions in there, which we will come to uh, shortly. Uh, 
Hopefully you can see the screen. Uh, so uh, if you're on the MUS uh, uh, distribution list, you would have got this, or you might have even received it from the WhatsApp um, platforms. Uh, so this was um, sent on the, on the early days of um, July. And uh, I'm not going to go through uh, the whole document, but it is quite key. And what we've been very careful with is we have not uh, put our own words around this. So everything in everything in this document, if you haven't seen it already, it, uh, uh, everything after after this full stop here uh, downwards is word for word what the what the government have uh, provided in in the guidance. Um, the guidance is extremely detailed um, in comparison to previous versions. Uh, just to give you an understanding, uh, when we done a review of it, uh, there was 137 recommendation items within within the guidelines for places of worship. Um, and uh, uh, in the uh, beginning, where they've got the terminology table, they said some of these things are musts, and some of them are um, shoulds. Uh, and we've done a quick search, uh, you know, the control control find search, and 133 of the uh, uh, the recommendations were shoulds. Um, so some of them are obviously more important than others. But what we try to do make it easier. We try to fill it onto one page, take the key items specifically for you know uh, centers, um, and and highlight them. Uh, so we've been saying this for a long time. Everyone has risk assessments are absolutely crucial. We put that in in, in bold and uh, in in red. Uh, again, complete quote: failure to complete a COVID nineteen risk assessment could constitute a breach of health and safety legislation, as could having a risk assessment with insufficient measures set out. Um, okay, I'm just going to quickly look at the questions uh, or comments. Uh, right. Okay, so this is we have uh, uh, inshallah, Munali or Zanusui is uh, available. So we'll, go, we'll go to him in, in a few minutes' time. And uh, there's a question here um, regarding opportunities for safeguarding officer training. Uh, yes, we will share those with you. Um, and uh, the previous recorded sessions from the other organizations. And also, we'll, we will also look to see if we can assist in. Uh, um, having more of those set up. Um, one, I, one question here regarding the new government guideline regarding one meter distance, can this be discussed? We will discuss it uh, in the risk assessment section. Okay, um, quickly going, going, going to go through this. Capacity is, a, is the key thing, a key outcome from social distancing. Um, obviously each building has you know, its own capacity. So uh, everyone locally needs to do the assessment. Um, some key areas, obviously, you need to identify all the areas in your building, but the key areas uh, like entrances, exits, smoking areas, bus shelters, they all need to be looked into. Um, I'll avoid repeating myself. Uh, we've already mentioned something. I mean, key item here, really, anything which is normally reused in the center or in the in the masjid uh, needs to be avoided. So ask everyone to bring their own. Um, and if there is anything which is there that is reused, then you need to have a clear procedure where you can uh, essentially put those items away in a quarantined, uh, in some sort of quarantine box for 72 hours uh, as per the guidelines. Um, and uh, yeah, so nobody else touches those in that period. Um, uh, this is a huge number six. Number six is huge. Um, obviously, we all in all of our centres we have got microphone systems because we have multiple floors or rooms, and there's many people, so microphone is key. And normally, you have the audience facing you. Um, when we come to the risk assessment, we'll look at this. Also, when we look at the 
when we look at the video which shows the transmission of, of the uh, micro droplets, this is going to become really more clear to you that you need some kind of shielding between the person who's speaking loudly towards uh, people. Um, uh, the more shielding, the better. So if they're all wearing masks as well, uh, it might be very difficult for the speaker to wear a mask. Uh, but again, the more protection, the better. If that's not possible, have some sort of screen, some sort of plastic clear screen, because the voice will still come through the microphone system. Um, and just general things like even touching the microphone, avoid it all. Have one person who's the microphone person who turns it on and off and the speakers refrain from touching them. Uh, we've already spoken about quarantining uh, shared items. Niaz, um, uh, we've, we've called that out. In, in the guidance, it's known as uh, consumer bills or food and drinks. We've, we've called it out as, as a Niaz or Nazar, some people call it, uh, after the uh, program, which we normally have as a communal thing. Um, it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to maintain social distancing by doing, doing that. So again, everyone in their own capacity needs to decide whether they think it's absolutely essential to do. And if you are, you need to be very, very uh, careful with how you're gonna uh, you know, uh, arrange that uh, within your risk assessment uh, without risking anyone's life. And last thing here, recording um, who actually will come into your building. So you need to have some form of register. Um, I believe I saw a message today uh, where the government has released a template because um, obviously data protection is around. So they've, they've given a template which uh, uh, would, would help uh, those centers who open. Uh, even if you're only putting down the names of the volunteers, for example, if you're only opening up to volunteers to run streamed services, keep a record of them, time and everything needs to be recorded to help the, the uh, test and, um, sorry, the, the contact tracing uh, process. Right, um, oh, brilliant. I think someone has shared, okay, someone has shared a risk assessment example. Uh, thank you, Murtaza. Um, right, we are now going to move over to Milana Ali Raza Rizvi. Um, Give me one minute, I need to unmute. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going um, Salaamu Alaikum Jamia wa Rahmatullah. First of all, I'd like to welcome all my uh, brothers and sisters uh, from different organizations and Imam Bargas across UK uh, to be participating in this Imami Council's um, special meeting concerning our uh, government guidelines for Britain, especially for England, um, concerning religious centers and the upcoming Muharram. 2020. I'll be switching between English and Urdu, um, as there are many uh, other organizations now which are non Pakistan organizations that are already uh, attending and they do not understand Urdu. So I may have to keep everything in English, but I will uh, switch between English and Urdu. I'll try and keep it as brief as possible so you can all um, uh, get updated information. As Brother Amir Saklan was explaining, and the government has given a very detailed outline on um, religious uh, organizations. As far as our Imam Bargaz are concerned, the Husseiniyas and uh, religious centers, uh, one of the main um, um, outlines on the government guideline is that anything that we touch or can be used again, like praying mats, tasbih, sujdaga, um, then you have to bring those from home, or if you're going to be using them again, then they have to be sanitized or uh, disinfected uh, on daily basis. And there must be a um, COVID-19 
safety officer appointed who will be responsible and there could be heavy fines if you do not comply with the conditions that the government has um, has legislated. Uh, these conditions may be revised on the 23rd of July. We have a meeting on the 14th of July, uh, which we have asked for, which is the day after tomorrow, uh, with the government uh, health department. And a senior official will be answering the questions, so inshallah, on your behalf. If you can leave any concerns and serious questions with our team, we will ask those questions from the health department of the government. We have uh, been told that we are not allowed more than 30 people. And out of those 13 people, Majlis Ulama and Imam Council will have 12. Our other community uh, members, our Khoda brothers will have three, and other communities, minorities will also have one or two representatives. So uh, we cannot have everyone attending that meeting. So inshallah, we will update you after that meeting and also after 23rd of July. Uh, for the time being, um, it seems that most of the centers, if not all, in London and around London will be doing the majalis online as the conditions from the government are uh, extremely strict. Uh, however, there are many centers as we have been going around UK visiting the different centers and speaking to the different uh, EC members. The executive committees have been phoning us continuously for the past three weeks um, uh, with their concerns that if they can open, if they can't, many of the big centers when the local council has visited them, allowed them 30 to 40 uh, people during Muharram. Um, and the main concerns of our uh, EC members are that how do we choose those 30 or 40 people? Secondly, even if they do allow these 30, 40 people, then the emotions are on their peak during 7th to 10th Muharram. And it will be very difficult for our committee members to stop the people who have come for the majlis that do not enter, we have already got 40 people. So you must not enter. And when the people come in and you tell them after Masai, do not touch the alam, do not touch the, <clears throat> the jhula or the cradle or the ziyarat or the taboot. So it will be extremely difficult for the EC members to stop the people from doing ziyarat because the emotions are extremely high. And if one person touches something, then the other is not. And if people do take photographs, or God forbid, if your neighbors complain, um, once the council has uh, the name or the list of people, because last week, unfortunately, a list, uh, a new legislation has come also through, that you will make a list of all the people that will be attending. And if God forbid any one of them are affected then they will trace back to where they may have uh, caught the illness from. Uh, so these are all the concerns. Now, <clears throat> um, one of the few points that I very quickly want to point out, amongst the government guidelines, the people who will be speaking, there are, they, the government has recommended that they will know there should be no chanting, so no naras, um, no singing, so no nohas, um, and no shouting. And if you do, if a person has to, then they must have a screen in front of their face. So the, uh, the mouth cannot spread because now WHO, unfortunately, in the past one week has said that it is airborne and you can catch it like you could catch flu. Um, so you will have to abide by all of those guidelines from the government. So we recommend that the Noha Khans have to have the distance between them and have a screen in front of them, in front of the Molana, if you do hold any of these. Now, what we want to announce is that Majlis Ulama Shia Europe hereby announces that we will not be taking the responsibility of open. The decision lies with the trustees, as the, uh, as the government has announced, that all religious places, their trustees will be responsible for the opening of the centers. Uh, and whatever decision you make, you will be liable for opening or if, uh, for, for not opening. Now, um, if you do allow the people to enter your premises, 
then you are responsible. Now, originally the government had said, and I had announced, unfortunately, wrongly, that 60 plus people will not be uh, not be allowed. But now the government has revised on the 29th of June and said under 70 can attend, but over 70 uh, are not allowed. But people who are vulnerable, heart patients or people diabetic and people who are chain smoke, you know, like people who smoke, uh, people who are aged, people with other illnesses, there's a whole list of vulnerable people, um, uh, should be asked not to attend. Or if they do attend, then you have to uh, ask them to, to follow all the, you know, the two meter guidelines. So religious places. The religious places, um, so in your funerals and weddings, you are allowed up to 30 people. For religious centers, you'll still have to get guidelines from the local council when they attend your place. If you have a separate entry to the exit and they look at the space and then they will allow you a num set number of people and then your management will still be responsible. The most concerning thing which members have pointed out to us is that the insurance companies will not be covering. Um, so the public liability insurance covers you if you have it, but if, if even then they do not cover coronavirus, unfortunately. So if anything goes wrong and if a person complains that I, I caught coronavirus from the Imam Barga, then your insurance does not cover you. Um, as a brief outline, we may give recommendations. Brother Amir Sakhlain, another ulama, Dr. Bas Naqavi, now will be giving you guidelines, but these are only recommendations from Majlis Ulama Sheikh Europe. Uh, final decision still lies with the uh, trustees or the EC of every Mambarga. Uh, other organizations, the major organizations of our Khoja brothers, our Iranian brothers, our Iraqi brothers, our Lebanese, and our Afghan. So majority have already decided that they will be holding, not all, but majority have already announced, some will be announcing in the next month or so, in the next few weeks, that they will be holding the uh, programs Majalis of Muharram online. I just clearly say that the Muharram ki Majalis is the responsibility of the trustees and their responsibilities in the Majlis of Ulmai Shaykh Europe. Neither will you say that you will open, nor will you say that you will close. जो भी जिम्मेदारी होगी वो हमारी नहीं होगी वो आपके ट्रस्टीज की होगी हमारी रेकमेंडेशन ये है कि आप जो भी हम आपको गाइडलाइंस बता रहे हैं उनको अगर आप खोलते हैं तो आप उन तमाम गाइडलाइंस को स्ट्रिक्टली फॉलो करें मुहर्रम में एहसासात जज्बात अपने उरूज पे होते हैं हम पढ़ने वालों के एहसासात इतने हाई होते हैं तो हम दूसरों से क्या कहें कि आपके एहसासात क्यों बहुत ज्यादा क्योंकि अगर रोने का होता है तो आप किसी को नहीं कह सकते कि भी गवर्नमेंट ने जो गाइडलाइन दी है उसमें उन्होंने कहा है कि अगर कोई रिलीजियस प्लेस में आए तो चूम नहीं सकते क्योंकि सिर्फ शियों का नहीं मसला कि हम अलम चूमते हैं ताजिया चूमते हैं बल्कि ईसाइयों में यहूदियों में हिंदुओं में और दूसरे अध्ययनों मजाहिब में भी मुकद्दस जो ऑर्नामेंट्स या जो तबरुकात होते हैं उनको चूमा जाता है उसके बोसा दिया जाता है उसकी ज्यारत की जाती है तो गवर्नमेंट ने कहा है कि आप ये and allow nahi karenge kyunki chumne se haath lagane se dusra chanda jo lenge aap log agar aap bolte hain to ek aadmi appoint karenge cash dealing sirf aur sirf ek aadmi logon se paise le sakta hai aur to in tamam jo government ne guidelines di hain jo abhi hamare brother amir saklan aur maulana dr basam sahab keh rahe the ki 137 unne jo qanoon jo bataye hain usko aap logon ne strictly follow karna hai agar aap kholte hain aap khud zimmedar honge aap ye nahi keh sakte mere ulama zimmedari le le hum hamesha saath khade hain saath denge محرم اس وقت پوری دنیا کے اندر جو ہے بہت زیادہ سیریس کنسرنز ہیں پروردگار عالم ان مجالس میں جناب سید الشہدہ علیہ السلام کی ہمارے تمام کے تمام مومنین بھائیوں بہنوں کی اس میں مدد فرمائے ہمارے سے اکثر جو لوگوں کے میں وہی بار ہوں ہمارے اکثر جو بھائیوں اور بہنوں نے ہم سے ایک کمپلین کی ہے کہ مولانا گھر کی مجالس میں ماحول نہیں بن پاتا ہم لوگ امام بارگاہ آنا چاہتے ہیں ہمیں محول نہیں بنتا میری اپنے تمام کے تمام امام بارگاہوں کی انتظامیہ سے یہ ریکویسٹ ہے کہ جتنے بھی امام بارگاہیں یہ فیصلہ کریں کہ گھر میں ملس کریں آپ خود اپنے طور پہ مومنین کو گائیڈ کریں کہ آپ بستر میں لیٹ کے یا صوفے پہ بیٹھ کے ملس نہ سنیں آپ خود محول بنائیں گھر گھر میں ازاداری کا محول خود بنانا پڑے گا بنتا نہیں ہے آپ جیسے فرش آزا بچھاتے ہیں گھر میں بھی ویسے ہی فرش آزا بچھائیں چاندیاں بچھائی جاتی ہیں بچھائیں 
جس طرح سے امام بارگاہ میں بیٹھ کے مجلس سنتے ہیں اسی تقدس کے ساتھ مجالس کو سنیں ماحول آپ کو خود بنانا پڑے گا ویسے ہی خود روئیں اور یعنی اسی طرح سے آپ سب کچھ کریں تب جا کے ماحول بننے کا پھر بھی ہمارے پڑھنے والوں کے لیے زیادہ مشکل ہوتی ہے کہ آڈینس نہیں ہوتا تو مجلس پڑھی نہیں جاتی تو میں صرف یہی ریکویسٹ کروں گا کہ جو بھی آپ لوگ فیصلہ کریں ان مجالس کے ماحول کا لوگوں کو ریکمینڈ کریں کہ وہ خود سے جو ہے لیکن ذمہ داری دوبارہ وہی ٹرسٹیز پہ رہے گی کہ وہ اگر کھولنا چاہتے ہیں اور دو دو میٹر کے ڈسٹینسنگ کی یہ گھر میں ایک میٹر تک آپ کو الاؤڈ ہے لیکن امام بارگاہوں میں پھر بھی دو دو میٹر آپ کو پھر بھی دو میٹر کا فاصلہ رکھنا پڑے گا گھر میں ایک ایک میٹر تک گورنمنٹ نے الاؤ کر دیا تو یہ انشاءاللہ شاء آپ لوگ باقی برادران اس کو گائڈ کریں گے آپ لوگ اپنے سوالات چاہیں تو ہماری ٹیم کو دے سکتے ہیں ہماری گورنمنٹ کے ہیلتھ ڈپارٹمنٹ کے ساتھ چودہ جولائی یعنی پرسوں کل کے بعد پرسوں ہماری میٹنگ ہے آپ کے اگر کوئی مزید سوالات ہوئے تو ہم ان سے پوچھنے کے بعد آپ لوگوں کو جوابات پیش کرتے ہیں میرے خیال میں کوئی مزید اس میں سوال نہیں ہوگا آخر میں پیشہ کر سکتے ہیں ہم دعا کرتے ہیں خدا بند مطال بحق کے جناب خاتون جنت ہمیں جناب سید الشہدا کی مجالس برپا کرنے کی توفیق عنایت فرمائے اور ہماری ان مجالس کی پروردگار حفاظت فرمائے اور پوری دنیا میں جہاں جہاں مجالس برپا ہوں مجالس میں حصہ لینے والوں کی پروردگار توفیقات میں اضافہ فرمائے چاہے گھر گھر میں مجالس ہوں ان گھر کی مجالس کی پروردگارہ ہماری حفاظت فرما اور کرونا وائرس کا خاتمہ فرما اور پروردگارہ ہمیں صاحب الزمان علیہ السلام کا ظہور دیکھنا نصیب فرما پروردگارہ دشمنان اہل بیت کو نیست و نابود فرما داعش و طالبان کو علیہ سعود کو غارت فرما اور پروردگارہ السلام ہمارے آشوریہ کے محرم کی کربلا کی نجف کی زیارات جو ابھی اعلان ہوا کہ یعنی ویزے آشور وغیرہ پہ نہیں ہوں گے اس سال اروائن کا انہوں نے اعلان نہیں کیا پروردگارہ ایران عراق میں اس وقت حالات کافی خراب ہیں ہمارے مقدس مقامات پہ زیارات وغیرہ بہت سے کربلا میں کرفیو تھا زیارات نہیں ہوئی پروردگارہ تجھے واسطہ اپنے حبیب کا تجھے واسطہ خون حسین کا ان زیارات کو دوبارہ ہمارے لیے راستے کھول دے ربنا تقبل منا انک انت سمی العلیم بحق محمد والحد یبین الطاہرین الماسو سلام علیکم Thank you so much, uh, Milan Ali Rizal Yassi. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, quickly move over to Brother uh, uh, Sayyid Naki uh, from, from Rahman Laws. He will just echo uh, the uh, legal and uh, liability side of things. Thank you, Brother. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, we have already discussed this matter. Molana has already shed some light on the issue of uh, insurance. Apart from whatever he has said, I'm not going to repeat it. But our experience as a, we are a center we, from Imamia Mission East London, UK. And at the same time, uh, from the legal perspective, we are not making a formal advice to you guys, but what we wanted to show you or what we wanted you to understand currently most of the insurance company it is our understanding that almost every insurance company has excluded covid 19 cover in a stealth mode or they are not telling you or whenever you ask make a specific query send an email so they will reply to you and they will tell you that they have excluded it we have raised this matter with the british insurance bureau we have also written to member of parliaments to, to, to raise this issue in the parliament. Maybe in the next uh, few days, they will be raising this issue. We have received a response from the uh, insurance industry as well. Currently, no one is covering COVID-19. Now, there are two type of insurances. One type of insurance for any center is that is a building insurance. That, that is nothing to do with rest of the thing. This is achievable. Building insurance has no problem at all. But with regards to public liability insurance, which is the main element, they are excluding COVID-19. So COVID-19 is not covered. In some of the insurance companies, they are saying that whenever you have a claim, then you can bring the claim. But they are not giving you a straight answer straight away, first of all. But when you are asking in writing, when you are telling them to respond by email or by letter, they clearly say that COVID-19 is excluded. So under the circumstances, it is the legal responsibility of a trustee of an organization. Uh, if someone makes a claim against an Imam Barga, most of the Imam Barga, they, they are the freehold properties and the properties is vested in the name of the charity, which means the Imam Barga. 
So if someone, God forbid, dies or goes into serious complication, there may be a potential claim against the charity. So whoever is opening the charity subject to current guidelines, they need to very seriously consider their liability, also the organizational liability. If a director or a trustee is making a decision which is in their notice, for example, in this case, there is an insurance company which is uh, refusing you to cover and then you are still opening it. So there may be some potential personal liability because you are making a negligent decision. Okay. And then apart from this, there is another issue uh, with regards to procession, which is potentially the 10th Muharram in particular. Uh, we have tried to speak with the insurance uh, in, in, in terms of our idara because we usually have a uh, a quite quite historic jaloos in East London, and they have refused to cover, let alone is 30 people. So they, we are not covered outdoors, we are not covered indoors. It is our understanding, like I am a member of New Mosque Forum, there are more than 65 mosques in that forum, and we are on the advisory board, and then we have this exactly same experiences there. So it is extremely important for every trustee to make a written query from their insurance provider. If the insurance is not covered, then potentially you, you, you need to be extremely careful before you can open. A second question that has been raised in the new mosque forum and then from the other brothers as well, they said that we will have a disclaimer and then we will ask our members and people to make a disclaimer. Brothers, our organizations are very loosely bound. We don't know we don't have the exact record, although this is the requirement of a government at present time. Anyone is coming for the prayers, anyone is coming for the potential azadari, then you need to maintain a register. Who is coming at what time and what time they're leaving? And then you need to keep that record for over a period of time. I think for a few weeks you have to keep it. And then if something goes wrong so they can trace back to the person, it is extremely onerous and almost impractical. Uh, now, how would you make a disclaimer? Let's say we have 200 members. We get 200, this first is extremely difficult to get 200 disclaimers. And then even if we can't stop who is coming in, we don't have an ID system, we don't have an RFID system, we don't have any other system. So that's important for you to understand. Second thing is from the legal perspective, even if a person is giving you a disclaimer, in our understanding court can throw that disclaimer out because the person may have not made an informed decision because you didn't inform they didn't have the proper guidance so they so the liability is there it is it is only a recommendation it, the as the molana ali as we have said it is your responsibility to make a decision the purpose of this meeting and guidance and whatever shia ulama europe is doing to assist you is for the purposes of trustees and directors to make an informed decision. So that's that's the liability we are discharging from this platform. So disclaimer is not enough. And last thing, uh, the last point I would like to make, based on these conversations on this meeting, today's meeting, my conversation, Molana's conversation and written guidance and the government guidance, you are very free to ask your insurance broker, you are very free to seek your own legal advice. So this is not a legal advice in that perspective, we are just guiding you. So this is the issue with regards to the insurance. You need to be, in summary, you need to be very careful. It is better that you make your decisions after September, if you potentially want to open it. Most of the Dallas Mollana have said has made a decision to postpone their opening plans. That is it from my side, uh, very quickly, three points that I have uh, elaborated, I will summarize it in Urdu language. Uh, brothers, this uh, uh, current situation is in the insurance perspective. I am a director or trustee who has responsibility for decisions. It is very important that they have an insurance broker with their Building insurance is a bad issue. It is not a bad issue. It is a bad Public liability insurance is a bad issue. आपका कोविड-19 कवर एक्सक्लूड तो नहीं कर दिया उन्होंने और अगर उन्होंने कहा है कि किया है या नहीं किया इन एनी इवेंट आपकी रिस्पांसिबिलिटी आप उसे इन राइटिंग ले लें उनसे ईमेल ड्राफ्ट करेंगे वो आपको जवाब दे देंगे 
हमारे एक्सपीरियंस में जो चीज आ रही है उसको पहले तो वो स्टेल्थ मोड बताए बगैर ही एक्सक्लूड किए जा रहे हैं जब आप पूछते हैं तो कहते हैं कि नहीं आपको वरी करने की जरूरत नहीं है आपको ये क्लेम नंबर है उसके साथ आप बात कर लें तो ब्रदर्स इस स्टेज पे हमारे ये अभी हमारा कोई क्लेम नहीं मैंने सुना भी नहीं किसी ने कोई क्लेम अभी फिलहाल बनाया है लेकिन आपका ये इशू नहीं है कि क्लेम कर सकते आपने उनसे पूछना है आप कवर्ड है या नहीं तो वो आपको ना में जवाब देते हैं जब ना में जवाब देते हैं तो इसका मतलब है कि आप कवर्ड नहीं है तो दो चीजों का कवरेज चाहिए जो इदारे जुलूस निकालते हैं जैसे दस मुहर्रम का जुलूस है या और कोई जुलूस वो निकालेंगे हमारा पोटेंशियल दस मुहर्रम का जुलूस है वो भी कवर नहीं है कोविड नाइनटीन के लिए अंदर नमाज भी कवर्ड नहीं है जो आपके मुहर्रम के प्रोग्राम है वो भी कवर्ड नहीं है अगर ये सारी चीजें इंश्योरेंस पब्लिक लाइबिलिटी इंश्योरेंस नहीं कवर कर रही बड़ा एक वैलिड क्वेश्चन है ये जो डायरेक्टर होंगे और ट्रस्टी कि अगर आप इसके अलावा फिर भी खोलते हैं तो ना सिर्फ वो तो इंश्योरेंस का क्लेम तो एक आता ही है बल्कि ये नेग्लिजेंस के जुमरे में भी पोटेंशली आ सकता है तो इसका ध्यान रखें इसका हल हमारे जहन में जो आता है वो ये है कि अभी बजाय इसके अंदर जाने के आप इसको कुछ टाइम के लिए डिले कर दें तो जब गवर्नमेंट थोड़ा आगे चलेगी फ्यू मंथ्स के लिए जैसे एक मंथ के लिए दो मंथ के लिए तो मजीद गाइडेंस तेजी से चेंज हो रही है उसमें अगर चेंज आती है तो इन इंश्योरेंस कंपनी भी उसके अंदर चेंज लेके आएंगी डिस्कलेमर कुछ लोग कह रहे हैं कि जी वो ठीक है जैसे पोटेंशियम जंजीर जनी और मुख्तलिफ इस तरह के इशूज आते हैं कहते नहीं हमने लिखवा लिया लिखवाने लिखवाने की कोई अहमियत नहीं है कोई डिस्कलेमर वगैरह और उसके लिए लीगल एडवाइस इंडिपेंडेंट लीगल एडवाइस चाहिए होती है इनफॉर्म डिसीजन चाहिए होते हैं ये सारी चीजें आपके नोटिस में होनी चाहिए प्लस हमारे इदारे में औरतें भी आती हैं जो कि मुहर्रम वगैरह के प्रोग्राम होंगे आगे बच्चे भी आते हैं बूढ़े भी आते हैं मुझे पास से बिल्ली नहीं किसी तरफ से नजर आ रही है आपको मुश्किल में ना डाल लीजिएगा क्योंकि सब लोगों के नाम पे रजिस्टर्ड है चैरिटीज रजिस्टर्ड है तकरीबन सारे इमाम बारगा फुली पेड है कोई उनका वो लोन लोन नहीं है तो जब क्लेम आएगा वो तो लाखों में क्लेम होता है अगर कोई अल्लाह ना करे किसी कुछ फोत हो जाए और ये क्लेम ले आए तो वो आपको फिर वो प्रॉब्लम करेगा तो मेरी तरफ से खुदाफिज मैंने कोई अपॉइंटमेंट है तो अगर कोई क्वेश्चन है क्विकली तो आई आई विलिंग टू आंसर दैट थैंक यू Brother Naki, that was very useful. Um, we will uh, get the questions to you, uh, inshallah, uh, after the session. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm just going to um, actually. What we'll do now is I'll open up another poll question. So we we you know what we've covered so far gives you the overall stance uh, that uh, the stance of being very precautious and and to to take your time in reopening, especially for something as you know well attended as Mohar, as you know. So let's see what the feeling is now in the uh, audience. I'm launching a poll. So the question should be on your screen. How confident are you that you will be able to safely hold your Muharram Majalis in your center? A, highly confident, B, confident, and C, not confident at all. I'll give you another 20 seconds, inshallah. And then we'll share the uh, results. Okay, yeah, we've got to, more than half people have replied, so I will end it here. Hopefully you can see this on your screen now. Um, uh, not surprisingly, uh, overwhelming response is not confident at all, uh, uh, just under 80%, um, with one, one person who has responded as highly confident, uh, and six people had responded as confident. Okay, uh, we will move on. Um, the people who have not responded so far, uh, please do respond. It's, it's uh, important for us to get a, a good picture uh, of you know what you're thinking, um, you know, so that we can give the appropriate guidance, uh, guidance or training uh, that might uh, be needed. 
uh, so far only, uh, only half the people are responding. So on the next poll, I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can get a higher percentage of response. Um, right, just gonna share my screen again. So we've, uh, we've just covered the insurance and liability uh, uh, section. If you've got any questions that you'd like Brother Naki to respond to, uh, specifically around liability, uh, drop them in the um, uh, chat message uh, section and we will get them to him and he'll give you an offline response. Uh, right, uh, okay. Uh, so next um, agenda item was to uh, look at a video, watch a video, uh, which will basically uh, show how the uh, micro droplets, as they're known, um, travel through an indoor space. Uh, obviously very pertinent to our call because our centers are indoor spaces, usually have not very high ceilings, usually not very well ventilated, um, and usually very packed on, on Moharam. So I think this really drives the message home as something maybe you would, you would want to share in your own community as well. I'm hoping this is gonna work. Let's see. Actually, I think I have it open already, one minute. Uh, Just give me, bear with me for 10 seconds. Hopefully this is now sharing again, and I'm hoping you can hear the sound as well. There's subtitles. Experts are now looking at this. The experiment starts. First, sneezing. We can see a large droplet about one millimeter in diameter. It quickly falls. But let's look through the high sensitivity camera. we can see small particles that seem to glitter floating through the air. These particles are all smaller than 10 micrometers or one one hundredth of a millimeter in diameter. Let's take a look from a different angle. They're small and light. You can see them drifting through the air. 
These are micro droplets. We're learning that sneezing isn't the only source of these droplets. We ran the same experiment on a close range conversation. People generate a lot of micro droplets when they talk loudly. The droplets between these two stay where they are. They don't drift away. It's not yet known what volume of micro droplets leads to infection. But Tatada says we can't rule out the possibility that micro droplets have spread the virus to some extent. Some micro droplets, small fragments of the virus, are found in many cases. Many people have been exposed to noise, or even to strong sounds. そういった中でですね、このマイクロキマスができて、それが近くの人、それが人が吸い込むことによって感染が広がる、そういったリスクが見えてきたものと思います。The risk of infection through micro droplets becomes even greater in a closed space with poor ventilation. This lab is simulating the movement of micro droplets in an airtight room. About 10 people in an enclosed space the size of a classroom. A person coughs once and spreads about 100,000 droplets. Large droplets are shown in blue and green. Most of these fall to the ground within one minute. But the micro droplets shown in red continue to drift. <laughs> this simulation uses only micro droplets. Five minutes later, 10 minutes later, later, the micro droplets are still floating in place. But there is a way to prevent this stagnation of micro droplets. Opening windows and increasing air circulation is believed to be effective. When you open a window, micro droplets are quickly swept away. They're very small and light, so any airflow will get rid of them. できればですね、2箇所開けて風の流れを作ってあげるということが大事、それが、まあ、1時間に1回でもいいから、そういうようなことをやることによって、感染のリスクというのはかなり下げることができるようになるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。Okay, thank you. Um, as we saw from some of the comments, it looks like that was well received. Um, we will send out the link um, you know, with the uh, email uh, post the meeting. Uh, the reason for showing that um, is quite clear that when you're in an indoor place, it's not very well ventilated, uh, you know, these, these uh, micro droplets they, they, they hang around for 20 minutes plus. Um, and as Milan Aliosa, as we mentioned, that uh, the World Health um, Organization recently went public with, you know, we, were more open with that uh, theory uh, recently. Um, so, you know, this just echoes things 
uh, that we already mentioned. Wearing face masks obviously helps. Having ventilation helps. Limiting people helps. Um, and you saw that even speaking loudly, um, you know, can uh, create a tremendous amount of uh, uh, micro uh, droplets as well, um, which which does tie into things like like Milana mentioned, you know, the, the chanting, the naras, and the uh, speaking of the the uh, poets and zakers, uh, or the even the uh, passionate speech, you know, from a, from a scholar. If there's no uh, kind of screen in, in front, um, you know, even even that can uh, have a danger to it. Um, so right, uh, we will move on. Um, I'm going to share the screen again. Okay, we are going to start the um, session around uh, the risk assessment now. So there's two things. Uh, this is going to talk not about doing a risk assessment, this is going to talk about planning a risk assessment, two separate things. If we were to do a full session on what kind of responses and mitigations you could put in the risk assessment, we'd probably need three, four hours specifically just to do that. So this is going to be high level, give you some tips, and also we'll ask the, the, the respected uh, audience um, to also contribute uh, as part of some of these points. Ah, actually, the slides are in slightly different order than I expected. Um, so capacity. Uh, you've, you know, everyone's heard about social distancing, and we all heard about the two meter rule. We've also heard recently about the uh, one meter plus, uh, you know, the two meters still, you know, the more recommended distance, um, but one meter plus uh, mitigations has also been uh, allowed. Um, so those mitigations are obviously dependent on your risk assessment, uh, and they can include measures like wearing masks um, and not sitting face to face and all that kind of stuff. There's loads of you know different uh, options out there. Um, and to be honest, even the two meter rule, it was never 100% Fail safe is just a way of minimizing risk. If you're two meters, if you're six meters away, you're obviously even safer. Uh, but it's that was like a reasonable, you know, thing uh, around cough distance. Um, but that's been shown as well that it can vary hugely. You know, uh, coughs can go further than two meters. Uh, but from a capacity perspective, we focus on capacity. Um, We've heard about this, about this one meter plus. We've heard about two meters. Um, the, the physical way of doing it is the best one, really. And that is going to your congregational area. So the part where you actually congregate for your majalis, uh, for your seminars, um, take a duct tape with you, take a measuring tape with you, and actually mark out the two meter points if you're going with the full two meter guideline must you know actually actually draw those out on your carpet so that you know uh, where people do need to sit um, and with duct tape because it's more you know sturdy it's not gonna you know uh, 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 be easily removable by children or something like that so you know, there's more wear and tear on that um, and if you haven't done that activity you're not truly going to know uh, some some of the uh, mosques, um, not not specifically Shia mosques, but even even the mosques of the uh, uh, Sunni brothers, uh, they've they've carried out this physical um, uh, estimation, um, and uh, they've reported um, the capacity drop from 
Um, what I've heard, two or three figures I've heard, between 8%. So let's just say it used to be 100 people in a congregational area. Some of them are now reported that only 15 people can, can fit there um, with the two-meter rule. Some have said uh, 12, some have said even lower. So approximately 10 to 12 percent uh, of your capacity becomes usable with the two meter rule. Uh, but it really depends on you know, every, every, every building will be different. So you have to do this uh, activity yourself. Um, but what we have done is one of the activities, one of the ideas that came up in our brainstorming when we first were looking into this um, was to have some kind of uh, easy calculator which you can go on, put in your, your uh, usual expected um, attendee um, numbers, and put in a few other factors in there, formula in the background, and it comes out with your new capacity. So uh, it's not fully ready yet. Uh, it's, it's only just being developed uh, by, uh, by one of our uh, affiliate organizations. Um, and uh, we will be releasing it uh, more widely. Uh, it is online, but it's not fully complete, but I'll just show you what it does uh, briefly. It's already open on my browser. And uh, I would say it's a good tool just to get the conversation starting. So when you're having your risk assessment uh, discussions and you're looking at your new capacity and you're you know, before you actually go and buy duct tape and actually go and do the activity, you, you, know, you could benefit from using this tool. Um, and if it comes back with a very low figure anyway, you might decide to postpone your reopening plans um, uh, because you know, the, the new capacity is too low. Um, so most people here would be seeing this for the first time because it's not, as I said, it's not fully approved yet. It hasn't gone through the approval process in from from MUS perspective, or um, we haven't been able to, uh, you know, have that checked by um, Public Health England. But as Milan Ali as we mentioned, there is a meeting with them, so we will uh, raise this idea with them as well. But just for your benefit on the call. Um, very simple, I'm just going to run through one. So there are three options that have been built in here. This first one is basically the two meter rule, 360 degrees, so all around you, uh, you need to have two meter distance. So let's say we use that model. And yes, we've done a risk assessment. And yes, we've implemented the solutions and mitigations that we've written down on the, on the risk assessment. Um, now it asks you whether your building is well ventilated. That's apologies for the spelling mistake there, uh, or typo by the developer. Uh, but basically, if your building is not well ventilated, that increases the risk. So it will lower your percentage uh, or your, lower your attendance level. So let's just say, yes, it is well ventilated for this example. Um, if you only got, say, one entrance, which is highly unlikely, but uh, you know, the more, the more entrances and exits you have available for more people, you can then build that one-way system that so you can have, a, uh, you know, one of the doors would be for entry and one would be for exit only, makes it a lot easier, well labeled, and clearly that reduces the risk. If you have, if you have people coming in and out from the same doors, then uh, the chances are they'll be facing each other at close distances and they may infect each other. So this has an impact as well on the formula. So if we say, yes, we have got separate entrances and exits. Um, I'm just going to put a small building size here, 200 square meters. And I'm just going to say, um, let's just say 200 people are allowed to use that building. And that would be your maximum attendee ship on a major event, for example. Um, and this is uh, another one as well. Let's just say the actual congregational area is smaller than 200. So you put that in there um, and calculate. So when you hit calculate, it comes back with the result. Uh, hope you can see that. Very simple at the moment. Like I said, it's not fully developed or designed. Um, 
and it will do that. Um, so the result there is telling you your new capacity. So you used to have 200 people, and based on the questions you've answered, that's now come down to 18 people based on the two meter rule, okay? So like, if, if I was using this with, uh, with my local community, I, would, I, would, I think I would benefit from it from a perspective of, okay, we were in this committee meeting, we run this really quick one minute uh, tool, and it tells us that actually only 8% or 9% you know, of our uh, normal attendees will be able to attend. This is definitely not worth taking that huge risk and all the liability and all the life risk and we could actually just go online for now until, until the government says, no, two meters now completely irrelevant, even one meter is irrelevant, and obviously that brings you back to a more healthy number. Um, I'm gonna play with this now. I'm just gonna change this to the one meter rule. So this is one meter all around you. It makes a big difference. So if we, if we change that, so we calculate the same answer as everything else, so with the one meter rule, 72 people could attend based on this uh, estimation. Um, obviously it's a marked in improvement, uh, threefold improvement. Um, again, nothing beats you actually doing a physical thing in your, in your own building, uh, but this gives us that good idea. And then this, this one in the, in the middle was kind of a mix, we might remove it uh, after we've had consultation with, with the other organizations. Um, but essentially, that is where, from a Jamaat perspective, so let's say you, you know, because you, you, you're obviously in a line, um, if everyone's wearing a mask, for example, right, everyone's wearing a mask, in the inner Jamaat, they're all facing the same direction, obviously. You, uh, on the side to side perspective, you respect the two meter rule, if that's possible. But from a Back to front perspective, you keep it to the normal masala length, which is just more than one, one meter. Uh, so that's obviously going to save you more space than the, the, the two meter 360. Um, and that gives you a slightly lower number than the one meter, but in between the other two. Um, so I've just shown you that for, uh, for um, visibility purpose. Uh, it's not officially launched yet. Um, I'll just see what we've got in the comments box. Uh, see. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple of questions there. Um, okay, we can respond to those. So like I said, it's not, it's not finalized. There's nothing like that available out there from anybody else. It's purely an initiative which was born out of MUS's, uh, you could say, um, brainstorming events early on. Uh, it was it was provided to a provider called uh, <coughs> Cosme Cosme uh, IT. Um, uh, they basically do software development, and they've taken this on. It's very early days, but hopefully this will go through an approval with with PHE as well, and we will um, make some amendments to that, and it will help. Um, so that was good to share with you. We'll move on to the next part of the uh, risk assessment discussion. Yeah, okay, just sharing. Okay, risk assessment, like we said, we're not doing a risk assessment, but we're, we're talking about uh, planning to do it, what you need to have in the, in the initial discussion when you've got your trustees, you've got your management committee there. How do you actually start doing it? There are templates available. Some of these already shared, one that MCB had uh, provided. Uh, I've also shared the link from, from uh, Health and Safety uh, Executive. Um, so there are many templates out there. We will share those uh, out once again. Uh, but I think, you know, from a high level perspective, what you need to all be um, thinking around is what are the activities and what are the areas, the physical areas uh, that you're assessing, because uh, it's very easy to get pigeonholed into just thinking about, oh, that, that main place where Malana sits and where the 
congregation sits. If you just focus your risk assessment around, say, that and the entrance, you're not actually capturing the whole thing. So you need to think about all the activities and all the areas that could be accessed. It's very important to do that. Simple list will help. Um, so I've just got a, a list here. By no means is this exhaustive and each center will have its own uh, variations uh, of this. Um, so two lists, uh, one areas and one activities. Obviously area, depending on your building type, you might have a cycle stand, you might have a bin area, but you should do. Um, you all, all have toilets, have some kind of kitchen, um, and the main, main areas for men, women, and children. Uh, but also out, outdoor areas too, should be part of your risk assessment. Um, and with the activities, um, we list, listed the, you could say, the activities related to namaz, uh, including the uh, wuzu, uh, donation as Malana Ali Razar, as we had mentioned, um, the actual speech by, by the scholar or the khatib or the, the zakirin, the chanting, um, and uh, uh, obviously announcements as well. You know, there's um, often there are announcements you know, during programs. It is an activity that should be thought about. Uh, Martim itself, uh, obviously, uh, it's a, a unique uh, uh, activity, you know, from a Muslim community perspective that, that, that we do. Uh, so you are not going to find that in the template of, of MCB uh, or, or MINAB. Uh, but it's something which you do need to, you do need to uh, factor uh, if you were to open. We already said the recommendation is not to open um, because of all those factors already mentioned. Um, but if you were looking at Martin, for example, right, in your activity, in your risk assessment, you need to think, A, you know, how, what kind of distance you'd keep according to the guidelines, uh, being very safe two meters, or if everyone was wearing masks and your building was well ventilated and you had all the other mitigations in place, then maybe you could go to one meter. Um, but then, you know, wearing a mask and, and doing Martin of course, what will happen is when 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 Martin happens, um, for normally for a prolonged period, it is you know the you're 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 breathing very heavily, um, and as we saw in that micro uh, droplet uh, presentation uh, uh, on YouTube that we saw, you know even even speaking loudly is you know spewing this out. So if you're breathing heavily. Uh, in a crowded thing and you're face to face as well often the martyrdom is done either face to face in lines or it's done in, a, in circles and different traditions people do it differently um, so you, you, you need to factor all of these things in your activities not specifically calling out martyrdom but it's, it's a unique thing from what we do Malana mentioned about touching and kissing of the uh, you know um, uh, holy symbols that we have uh, you know things like the uh, tabut or the, or the jewel or the cradle uh, that, we, that normally comes out during the martyrdom period uh, of the session. Uh, obviously our, our intention is, is to, to touch it from a religious perspective. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a love that we have and respect that we have for it. Um, so it'd be very difficult to, to stop that from happening, especially when you're in that highly emotive you know, part where you've just heard Messiah, it's very difficult to control that. Um, so yeah, these are the kind of activities you need to look at very carefully. Um, and if we move away from, from those items, things like voodoo, uh, the guidelines so far, not, not the guidelines, the, the, the precedent sent, uh, set already by mosques that have already opened just for namaz, they basically said no, no voodoo in the center. You have to do voodoo from home. So that obviously creates all sorts of limitations as well for some people. Um, so all these things need to be factored into your uh, risk assessment. Um, right, before we go into online recommendations, uh, one minute, I think there's another poll. I think if I could launch this. Okay, uh, the next poll is regarding online, so we'll do that at the end of this session. 
Um, right. Uh, okay. Actually, we'll quickly look at the chat to see if there's any specific questions. Yeah, actually, what we can do is uh, if anybody would like to comment at this point, if you would like to uh, mention something around the recommendation point, uh, not the recommendation, the, the, uh, the risk assessment segment that we've just seen, or any of the previous uh, uh, segments, uh, if you would like to speak up, uh, if you can put your, if, if you can say that you would like to speak in the chat, I'll unmute you. And it would be good to hear from some of you. No one? Anybody wants to say anything before we move on to the next and the last segment? That's fine. Okay. Um, one thing, uh, whilst I share the screen, one thing that just to echo what Milana Lira as we mentioned about the whole uh, um, contact tracing process, which is up and running, and is, is, is going to pick up speed and will also go down the, the app uh, usage as well, which will make the uh, tracing even easier for them. Uh, we heard, I think, only maybe four days ago, five days ago, uh, when, when uh, the government announced that you know, pubs can reopen. Uh, pretty much, I think on the weekend, three of the pubs were closed, um, and that was due to the contact tracing. They were able to, um, you know, using the records that were available, limited records, they were able to identify that actually it was contracted from that place. So this is this is only going to mature. They'll be, be they'll be better at doing that. So there's something to be aware of there. It wouldn't be something that they they are. You know, we, we shouldn't ever think that they are trying to, um, uh, you know, focus in on places of worship specifically. They're, they're closing pubs down as well, right? So we need to be very careful that, you know, the reason they're doing that is to, to keep people safe. That, that's the main thing. I'm just sharing the slides. So if you can see it now, oops, it's gone again. Yep, it's back. So uh, as you've heard, uh, the recommendation is to have uh, the program online uh, for, for Moharam, and not just Moharam, any of the major events that are coming in before. I believe Gadir comes before Moharam as well. Um, right. So let's look at this from a different angle. So now we're talking about online. Yeah. So normally what we expect and what we love actually is uh, we, we all go to the centers and we you know, we go to our, normally a cultural center that speaks our language and we will attend that and it will be delivered in kind of like a serial way. You know, you might have like an English section uh, and then the English section finishes and then you have your Arabic section and then you have your Urdu or your, your, your Farsi or you know, whatever other language you have. And there might be a small speech done by someone just for kids. Um, and the women usually end up looking at the screen anyway, uh, you know, in, in, in our cultures. But there's a unique opportunity here. You could see it from this angle that using the technology within the one, one or even, you know, two time periods, you could have simultaneously, you can run one session for children <clears throat> dedicated to keeping them engaged and, and, you know, something targeted specifically for children. Uh, not just for five minutes, 10 minutes, you could do a whole one hour session with them. You could do um, a, uh, a session specifically for Ford Sisters, or potentially, you know, the committee might decide that actually is better for the adults to have one and the children to have a separate one. It's completely up to you. But these are just some ideas, see as an opportunity that when you're doing this online anyway, um, instead of having one account, have two accounts on Zoom, or as many as you need, um, and you can you know, set up your sessions uh, to target those. From an MUS perspective, there is uh, a plan to have a dedicated um, stream for children uh, for, for the 10 days. Uh, inshallah, the, the plan will be uh, communicated uh, soon with the poster. Um, so we'll have a specifically chosen reciter to, to um, cover that content. 
for the children if you are unable to uh, manage that within your own centers you're obviously more than welcome to, to use that inshallah uh, just having a quick look at the messages okay Yeah, so I think this is a question. Um, will MES support organizations in this unique opportunity, inshallah? Yes, we will. So we were already at the beginning of the COVID-19 period, we realized that you know digital is our friend, that we have to go to up, we have to upskill our community. So we've done training sessions up front for the madrasas as well and for, you know, for, for scholars so that they know how to use the, the uh, uh, technology. Um, we are more than happy. Uh, to, to do another round of that uh, to a wider uh, uh, audience um, and uh, uh, also if you need help with identifying specific speakers or scholars for those online sessions then MUS will be able to assist with that as well inshallah uh, yeah one comment there you don't have to use zoom you can use webex or you can use other other tools too um, so that's one session uh, one one slide Uh, this has already been spoken about uh, by Milana Ali Reza Rizvi. Um, you know, one of the main things when, we, when you're going to a, a, a Majlis Ezzah is the environment. When you have the people around you who obviously have the same love uh, and uh, relationship with, with the Aima, uh, the Islam, and when we hear about the, you know, the grief, uh, the, you know, the collective grief that creates an environment uh, which is lacking at home. So, what you could do to your congregations is you can uh, to you know, to your members is uh, give them some tips on how they can turn their home into that environment um, so if if they if they generally wear you know black clothing uh, you know they can do that at home they can sit as a family they can uh, maybe dedicate a part of their room um, you know with with that setup um, and uh, Try and make that environment come alive in your own home as much as you can. Um, and the same advice is for uh, you know the speakers to you know if you are if you are te if you are speaking from home as a scholar or as a as a uh, poet, for example, then make sure your background and everything is uh, helping that environment. Uh, we will send out a poster with some of those tips as well, inshallah. Um, a little bit about the technology or some options available. Uh, so we are mainly talking about Zoom, but you don't have to use that. Um, uh, we, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, MUS have done this for some of these conferences. We we bought additional licenses from Zoom to allow, uh, you know, more attendees to join. Um, it only costs forty pounds, and it's uh, it's uh, on a rolling monthly. Basis. So you can cancel it after your usage of Mahoram, you can cancel that and it'll only be a one-off payment. Uh, and uh, you can get uh, up to, I think, 500 users with that. And if, you, if, you, if your congregation is bigger than that, there's a larger uh, kind of uh, options as well. I think you can go up to 1,000. Um, and obviously you don't need to do that because if you're not really having two-way conversation with all those people, then you don't really need to do that. You can have the normal account and just stream it to YouTube or Facebook, um, you know, for free without without having to do that uh, uh, add-on. Um, so if anybody needs help with that, feel free to put a question there, and we'll we'll get the the uh, advice to you for that too. Um, and I think this is probably the last slide. <coughs> so obviously, if you're uh, when we talk about the mahal, the, the environment, it, what would be good for the community is if you're holding the event from your center, so you're still using the member, you're still, you know, using the pulpit, um, and you know, that will definitely help create that environment. Uh, obviously, you will need to really limit the people you attend. Probably best to keep it just to the volunteer teams or the, the management team who normally look after the mic and the stage and and and, and everything. Um, if you do decide to, you know, using the social distancing rules uh, and uh, the, your new capacity, say, instead of 100, it's now 10. Uh, if you do decide to use that 10 people uh, for attendance, 
you know, offering spaces to people in your community, then please go down some sort of pre-event registration tool. You can use things like Facebook. Uh, you can create your own one on Google. Um, uh, we can give you tips uh, on, on how to do that, or we can give you a template. Um, and uh, there's other, other uh, applications out there like Eventbrite. You might already have something built onto your website, uh, which allows people to basically say that they want to attend this. It's not a confirmation to them. You would confirm back to them saying that there is no space, so you can put a limit on the number of people who can apply online. Uh, but be careful with that because you wouldn't want you know, the same people having the opportunity all the way through. The best way, cleanest way is only let those people who are going to be speaking to attend and the people who open and close the doors and you know, all, all that kind of thing, limit it completely down. Um, and uh, I think that is the last online recommendation. Um, next steps. Next steps. Um, so this is uh, purely from an MUS perspective. Um, and kind of this, what you're looking at here is a high level communication plan, right? What we, what we want to do in terms of communicating with you further. We already had the session, uh, like we said, right at the beginning uh, when we were recommending to close. We've had sessions since then on training people. We've, we've had online sessions uh, for madrasas, et cetera, et cetera. You've had the briefing in June. You've had this seminar now. Um, Milana had mentioned that there is a private briefing for the Shia scholars on, I think you said 14th, but I thought it was 15th, but either, either way. Um, so Public Health England will be briefing Shia scholars on our request to, to actually uh, give specific guidelines for the Shia practices um, so that we're safe. Uh, that's on the 15th. Then we're expecting another updated guideline from the government on the uh, 23rd um, of July. Uh, after that, we, we are planning to hold another seminar, uh, depending on how much information we, we gain from those, we, we, that we, we may have another session. Uh, and then before, before Muharram again, we uh, may have another seminar uh, just before uh, to to get another temperature check from everyone, make sure everybody's up to date. You know, things are changing on a daily basis. Uh, we'll also be sending out a Mohoram pack um, uh, for activities for, for children as well, and you know, in many other aspects in that, inshallah. Um, there's one section actually was missed out in the presentation pack, it seems, uh, and that's why I'll just take one step back. Uh, uh, it is around communication. So this is th these were our communication steps, uh, high level. Um, but when they, when you've done your risk assessment, if we go back to the slide, uh, I'll, I'll I'll scroll back whilst I speak. Uh, once you've done your um, risk assessment itself, then you do need to communicate that in a very effective way. Uh, just sending out the risk assessment detailed form isn't really going to help. That's not good enough communication. You, you need to create uh, specific documentation uh, you know, for that. If you can just give me one minute. Uh, apologies about that uh, and the disturbance at home. Um, yes, yeah, so it was just reiterating communications uh, should include, and we can probably share some examples now before we close, of, of other mosques. Uh, at the very least, you should have a poster uh, when you do go into the reopening phase of when, when the people attend, what they should expect, what will be the protocols in place, what behavior you're expecting from them. Try and think of the different type of people in your community. So break, break your communication down 
some people can only understand english some people can only understand urdu or punjabi so you need to make sure that you're covering all bases think specifically about the elderly um, and the people who have underlying conditions what you should be saying to them how you should approach them people that you know who are in those categories it's probably better to give a personal touch so somebody in your committee contact them on a one to one basis and let them know um because not everyone uh, you know um takes that information in the same way if you just send them a letter or something um so do make a plan uh, if you got any questions around that again we 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 are starting to build a pack for communication um so we could give you templates in the in the next week or two um and once it is available we will send them um but yeah communication is key because all your hard work could go to vain if if the people who you're serving in your community are unaware of uh, what's in place right okay uh, that takes us to the end of the presentation um and and the the key segments uh, we are now in the the question section um i'll just quickly review what's here in the uh, chat okay there's a question here from um uh, said asad from naniton um about giving a guide on what would be essentially the ideal or in a typical hadith uh, that could be given uh, to to scholars or to reciters um you know seeing that this is an online only recommendation from that perspective would there be anything of a recommendation from mus on that or should we say that's purely up to the local centers um i will unmute the ulama um hello i'm meeting dr abbas nakwi Hi, Kamal. Can you hear us? Okay. So what we'll do, if we if we can't um, get response on the call, we will, like I said, we will respond to all the questions offline as well by email. Um, and uh, we'll have a log of all these questions, and we'll make sure each and every one of them has been uh, answered. Um, there is one poll before we ask uh Mr. Fidal Bukhari to to uh, end on the dua there's one other poll that needs to be done uh just to get your understanding and your feeling around online muharram i hope you can see that on your screen first question there is would you like a training session on how to best utilize zoom features for your muharram program um question 2 was um what is the limit of users on basic paid zoom account uh we know the answer to that that was see, to see if you were paying attention really um and the third one is uh, do you know how to live stream uh, to youtube or facebook because that's going to be a key thing as really as you can see we're just trying to gauge the technology understanding so that we can uh, develop our training session appropriately i'll give you another 15 20 seconds okay okay we'll end it here and we'll share as well so just over half said yes we would like training um the trick question in the middle what is the limit of uh, users on the basic paid zoom account um is is 100 so that's right most people got that right uh, it's up to 
uh, on the if you buy the add-ons from them, um, and also 500 is also on the add-ons. Um, and uh, most people do know how to stream onto YouTube, which is great. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you for your time. Uh, I will hand over to Milana, um, say, Dawes and Bukhari uh, to, to end with the dua. Bismillah rahman rahim Hazrat Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam ki dua-i arfa mein se chand jumle padte hain Alhamdulillah allazi laysa li qaza'ihi Dafio कोई दफा करने वाला नहीं है और जिसकी अता का कोई रोकने वाला नहीं है और किसी साने की सनत उसकी सनत की तरह नहीं है वह सही है बुसत देने वाला है बुसत करने वाला है अल्लाहवल तो वजत हत तो मदल आसार वल्लाहकाब لو امرت حان اودی شکر واحدت من ان امکا مستطا تو ظالق الا بمن کل موجب علی بہی شکر کا ابدا جدیدا اے پروردگار اگر میں فکر کروں اور کوشش کروں زمانوں اور صدیوں کے طول کے برابر اگر میں زندہ رہوں کہ تیری ایک نعمت کا شکر ادا کر سکوں تو میرے لیے ممکن نہیں ہو سکتا مگر تیرے احسان کے ذریعہ جس پر شکر جدید لازم ہو جائے گا اور تازہ تعریف واجب ہو جائے گی مازا وجد من فقد وَمَا الَّذِي فَقَدَا مَنْ وَجَدَا لَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ رَزِيَ دُونَكَ بَدَلَا وَلَقَدْ خَسِرَ مَنْ بَغَانْكَ مُتَحَوِّلَا كَيْفَ يُرْجَ سِوَاكَ وَأَنْتَ مَا كَتَعْتَ الْإِحْسَانَ اے پروردگار ماز وجد من فقد جس اس نے کیا پایا جس نے تجھ کو کھو دیا اور اس نے کیا کھویا جس نے تجھ کو پا لیا وہ مایوس ہوا جو تیرے علاوہ بدل پر راضی ہوا اور وہ گھاٹے میں رہا جس نے تجھ سے اعراض کیا کیسے تیرے علاوہ کسی سے امید کی جا سکتی ہے جبکہ تو نے احسان کو ختم نہیں کیا اور کیسے تیرے علاوہ کسی سے طلب کیا جا سکتا ہے جبکہ تو نے احسان کی عادت کو نہیں بدلا اے وہ ذات جس نے اپنے دوستوں کو اپنی صحبت کا مزہ چکھا دیا وہ اس کے سامنے خوش آمد کے ساتھ کھڑے ہوئے اور اے وہ ذات جس نے اپنے دوستوں کو اپنی حیبت کا لباس پہنا دیا وہ اس کے سامنے کھڑے ہو گئے اے پروردگار قبل اس کے کہ تیرے بندے تجھے تیرا ذکر کریں تیرا ذکر کرنے والوں سے پہلے تو ان کا ذکر کرتا ہے بسم اللہ عظیم اللہ عظم اللہ عظم جل اللہ کرام یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ يا رحمان يا رحمان يا رحمان 
پروردگار تجھے واسطہ محمد والے محمد کا ہم سب پر نظر کرم فرما پروردگار محرم الحرام کے سلسلے میں یہ نشستی پروردگار ہم سب کو صحیح معنی میں آزادار سید و شہداء میں شامل فرما پروردگار محرم کی آمد آمد ہے ہم سب کو محرم الحرام میں آزاداری کرنے کی توفیق نایت فرما علماء کرام مراجع عظام رہبر معظم کا سایہ ہمارے سروں پر مستدام فرما مجلس المعاشیہ یورپ کو مزید ترقی عنایت فرما اور جتنے بھی ہمارے مسئولین ہیں اور ٹرسٹی ہیں اور عدادار ہیں اور جو ہمارے ساتھ جتنے بھی برادران ایسی میٹنگیں آرگنائز کر رہے ہیں قوم کو عویر کرنے کے لیے اور تعاون والبر و تقوی کی بنیاد پر پروردگار ان سب کو اجر عظیم عطا فرما ہمارے آقا مولا امام زمانہ کے ظہور میں تاجیر فرما اللہ مصلی علی محمد مول محمد و اجل فرج ہوں thank you everyone for for joining uh, we will be uh, ending the session like we said we will we will uh, be uploading it to to youtube after a review and also we'll be following up with a email to respond to any of the questions which have been unanswered so far um, and with the links and um, links to the resources that have been mentioned uh, thank you for your time and uh, for um, are taking in a two hour plus session uh, on such a nice day and uh, we we hope and pray and that you and all your community are uh, keeping safe and inshallah we'll meet soon thank you very much <laughs>